Hi guys, Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. You know, I could sit and play that backing track all day. Thanks for joining us. It's Monday evening. We're here to do that thing that we talk about, or we do at least, and talk about the thing that we talk about every Monday. And if I seem a little bit, uh, I'm going to say tired maybe, or a little bit kind of more relaxed than usual, it's because I have literally, <clears throat> pardon me, hopped out of the van. Um, from a very successful Blitzkrieg show in London. I've literally arrived back at my house about, geez, maybe 45 minutes ago and jumped straight onto the stream. So, hey, listen, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, traffic was bad, but we got here. We made it. So, listen, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Uh, been having loads of fun playing along with our White Snake style backing track. Don't forget, by the way, if you want to get hold of that backing track, uh, as Sacred God Slayer uh, has rightly pointed out, it's an awesome backing track you can get that on the guitar interactive youtube channel so if you're watching us on youtube which most of you guys are some of you guys are watching us on facebook some of you watching on youtube uh i don't think anybody watches us on twitch we're always live on twitch but i don't think anybody watches us but that's fine because youtube is kind of where we live so you want to get a hold of that uh, back and track, it's available on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. GI Plus uh, subscribers get it for free, of course, but GI Plus non-subscribers also get it for free. So you can go here, see this URL down here, and you can get this back and track ad-free, or you can watch it on YouTube and watch the ads totally up to you i would go to gi plus and get it it is our 87 ballad uh it's great fun like no prizes for guessing uh what's going on there so we have a quick question by the way uh calling gi plus subs what's your favorite gi plus course on the site to date let us know in the comments so before we get into that let me tell you a little bit about what's going on today today we are discussing uh the end of the note and what i mean by that is what happens when you're finished playing your note what do you do with it? Now, this is something that a lot of people, um, a lot of people maybe don't consider as much as they should, but for my money, it's really, really crazy important, right? Like super, super important. Uh, and it really kind of separates the grown ups from everybody else when it comes to guitar playing. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but for the time being, if you're enjoying these streams, getting some use out of the free content that we're giving you guys, which we will continue to give you guys because we love to give you stuff for free. Um, there's a few ways you can help us keep the lights on, a few ways you can support us. You can do the following. You can give us a thumbs up uh, on whatever platform you're watching on. You can give us a comment, drop us a comment down below. The algorithm loves some comments. The best way you can help this without paying a penny is by sharing this stream with your guitar playing friends. Um, we'd love to get this out to as many guitar players as possible. So if you've got a friend who you think would appreciate this kind of content, give them a share. Copy the link, send it across to them. We'd love to have them on stream. We will, of course, be answering your questions at the top of the hour. So if any of your friends have got questions, we'll answer those too. And, of course, the absolute best way that you guys can help us keep these streams going is you can sign up, boop, 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 right here uh, to GI+. GI Plus is your exclusive lesson platform for guitar uh, and all things guitar related. We have so many courses on there. We get some great votes for um, some of your favorite courses that are kind of coming in. Um, we've got loads of, we'll count to that in a second. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, but so much great content there, right? You could lose months of your life going through, years of your life going through GI Plus content. So if you haven't checked it out, you get exclusive lessons from myself, from Rick Graham, Tom Quayle, Andy James, Andy Wood, Ian Simo, Sam Bell. Uh, who else do we have? Like so many great guitar players and more are coming. We're going somewhere with this expressive techniques log too. So before we get stuck in with the meat of today's lesson, let's just check in with the stream and see how you guys are doing. We have some questions coming in already, which I am going to address. Of course, we're going to take a look at Cowcat's question, which is very, very important and sacred god slayers kind of spin-off question from there which are all kind of guitar health related and this is something that i like to talk about right i'm really into this sort of subject because it's something i've contended with myself so we'll talk about that just a little bit later on but for the time being we want to say hi to future now future now is the first one through the door he beat marcin in marcin is our perennial first attender future now though 
burst through the door. Good to have you, man. Marcin sends his congratulations. I love that everything's sporting uh, on this sort of stuff. I love this content, a cost contest to get in first, which I'm really, really into. That's pretty sweet. So, okay. Sacred God Slayer says, hello, guys. Hello, Nick. Hey, man. It's great to see you. A returning viewer of long standing. He's been with us for a very, very long time. Uh, Marcin is saying, how's the weather in Italy? Hopefully, it's pretty warm. It's pretty warm here in the UK, too. But it's kind of that muggy sort of warm that's not terribly, terribly pleasant. So, we're going to address this question in a moment. Future uh, big hit guitar tuition material could be how to recover your guitar skills after vacations or how not to suck much more than before. We're going to get to that, man. We're going to get to that because there's some really interesting comments in the stream about that too. Uh, I'm just going to kind of highlight some of those so we can get back to them. Uh, we'll get back to those in just a moment because there's some really important stuff there. Uh, Kim, the big boss in the house. Uh, hi, Kim. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Marcin's got a great tip, by the way. He says, Rick Graham's hybrid picking workout is available for free on his website, so be quick to get it, guys. You can get that, I think, before midnight tonight. So after this stream, and not before, after this stream, go get it. Uh, Rick's a great, great guitar player and a good guy, too. Really great guy. Um, Aunt Hench, and we like that. We're into that sort of thing. Uh, what else do we have? Larry Warren is in the stream. Hey, Larry, it's great to see you, man. I hope you're keeping well. Uh, who else do we have? Cowcats is doomed with his own guitar playing. We're going to get to that. Uh, Mark Crandall says, hey, guys, just became a Fully fledged member, pretty exciting stuff. A bargain for the price, I feel. I think so too. I think so too. PJ is tuning in. PJ says, Does anyone think we try and learn way too much rather than honing what we're really good at? We're going to start that because that's going to be part of our discussion a bit later on. If you guys have questions, by the way, just drop them in the comments because we'll answer those at the top of the shop. So many great comments here, though. We're going to come back to that. David Yates is in the house. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Finally picked up my guitar after arthritis hiatus. That's hard for me to say, but uh, I gather probably a lot harder for you to go through. But listen, man, I'm glad you're back at playing. Sweet. I must get some thinner strings, me thinks. Dude, I have been, like, winding my way back to thinner and thinner strings. Got my string drawer down here. Uh, Paradigm 9s at the minute. That's the guy. Uh, I'm using the Paradigms because I'm gigging a lot more. So, um... I like the coating on Paradigms. They're not like super, super thick coating. Uh, I'm into those. But yeah, I was using like, what else do I have in here? Uh, I was up to these guys for a while. These are ultra slinkies. I think I have an even heavier gauge in here somewhere. Ultra slinkies are 10s, top 11s, bottom. Uh, but I went on the light strings trip and I'm really into it. I feel like the tone is better. I feel like there's more brightness in there. Um, certainly through gain, I feel like it's a little bit better. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Foghorn is in the house. Great to see you, my friend. Scott is in the house. Scott's upgraded his amp today. Uh, he's going for a Line 6 Catalyst, which is a killer sounding amp. Um, possible contender for the Boss Katana for like the best the best reasonably priced amp out there. Uh, <laughs> T.O.T. Midi Man says, great playing Nick. Hey man, thank you so much. Really, really kind. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Nick snaking. I could snake all day, my man. Rory Lisbon is in the house. Hi Nick and all. Great to see you. Uh, Timothy Appling, Timothy Appalling, whose name I keep getting wrong, but in a really entertaining way. Uh, says, ahoy from the Florida Keys, Nick. Uh, Sacred God Slayer. Uh, no problem, my man. Uh, yeah, sweet. We like that. There's a discussion going on in the comments. Uh, Marcin says, Nick, <laughs> what a rock star. Straight out of a gig to see us in the stream. Uh, you're the legend, man. You're very kind. You're very kind. It's a great gig it was, by the way. Really, really great gig. So we've got some votes for favourite courses. Uh, my favourite is Nick's Modes course. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Guitar Interactive Magazine uh, Technique Hot Fixes is fire. We actually have another one of those coming for you. We have a part two coming. Uh, Nick Genesis Phrasing and Melody. We're into that. David Yates. Uh, signed up with GI Plus but haven't really used it or seem to get stuck in the same practice rut. David, drop me a message. We're going to talk about that. Right, drop me a message on Instagram and I'll see if I can direct you to some courses that may help you because I am here to help, right? And would love to get you the best out of your membership. So send me a message on my personal Instagram at Nick Jenison. Uh, where you'll also see some um, some stuff from this weekend's gig. I'll post that up when I get a chance. Uh, what else do we have? Um, <laughs> superb. Day is dawning. The time is near. Aliens calling. Can we survive the live stream? I'll try my best. We didn't survive last week's live stream. That is for sure. Anyway, listen. We are um, <laughs> we are going to get straight into our meet of today session because we got loads and loads of great questions. I can sit and answer your questions all day. But we're going to talk about the end of the note. Now, the end of the note is 
as you might expect, what happens once you find, stop, once you've finished playing your note. So we've done a bit of stuff on the beginning of the note, the onset. Uh, we also have some stuff on the middle of the note, which is what you do um, with your vibrato, what you do with your volume and tone controls. We did a load of that last week. There were some audio issues, but the back end of that stream from the 30 minute mark is pretty good, if I do say so myself, once we fixed the issue with our microphone. Can you believe just switching the switch on and off fixed it? But hey, one of those things. It worked before we went live and then gremlins happened, but that's fine. So anyway, we're gonna get onto the meat of things. We're gonna switch from our white snake palette onto something a little bit less busy, uh, but we're gonna stick in the domain main of balladry. We're going to go to our um, prog ballad. Now this is one of the, uh, the here it is, modern prog ballad. This is one of the tracks that we play along with in the ultimate guide to melody and phrasing. So there's an example solo uh, that you can learn in the ultimate guide to melody and phrasing and a bunch of example phrases that go along with this back and track. So GI Plus members will get that if you want to explore this a little bit further. But for the time being, I'm just going to play a little bit and I'm going to do some stuff with the ends of the notes. And I want you guys just to play kind of like note spotter for a moment. So I want you to kind of like write in the comments if there's any cool ideas that you like, anything that I'm doing at the end of the notes that you're into. So let's take a listen. I'm going to play a little bit and then we'll analyze. Here we go. Well, would you look at that? Turn the voice off. <laughs> I did say I was tired, right? So a few things I want to uh, I want to address there real quick. Uh, thanks for letting me know, by the way, the guys. Thank you for letting me know. I just I forgot to turn it back on. Forgot to turn it back on. So we're back on there, right? Uh, back on there. David Yates says, I like it all. Very melodic. Uh, this comment here is a very, very cool one from Future Now. It's what a whopper that solo is. Very well, con very cleverly constructed as well. Props to you, sir. That would be the solo from the Ultimate Guide to Melody and Phrasing, the example melodic prog solo. I do like that solo a lot. I'm a big fan of that one. That took a bit of... Uh, a bit of stuff. So some observations, right? Some observations about uh, what was going on there. We have Steve McD saying slide down. Now this is one of the most obvious things that people do a lot when we play uh, a phrase it's something we do a lot to end a, a phrase or to to kind of like end note. We slide off it. Now we're going to address some sliding things first, but let's talk about the effect that sliding has on our various pitches. So what I mean by this is sliding off being sliding off down or sliding off up. Now this is going to extend to various like pitch alterations on the end of the note, which we'll get to in a second. But first, let's talk about sliding down. So if we slide down, let's take this note right here, which is going to be the 12th fret on the B string. It's a B note. That camera's a little bit bright, but I'll get back to that. That's maybe something I can address as we go on. So uh, we'll figure that out. So we've got this note right here. Our B note on the 12th fret. If we play this note and we slide off, take a listen to what happens. Take a listen to the uh, the effect this has on our note. So if I slide up to it, or I play up to it, and I slide off, that has a very distinct sound. Very, very distinct sound if I slide off downwards. What about if I do something similar, and then I slide off upwards? Let's take a listen. 
Now that has a different effect on what's going on. What do you guys think? I'm gonna play it once again. So if I slide off downwards, that has a certain kind of sound. If I slide off upwards, that has a different kind of sound. That has a different kind of, uh, I guess a different kind of narrative effect. I won't say emotional effect, but a different kind of narrative effect on the sound. I think, we've got some comments coming in already. Uh, we've got some comments already, some good ones, I think. Um, but we'll get back to that. So for me, sliding down sounds really, really like affirmative. It sounds finished. It sounds finished. We're gonna, oh, we've got, we've got a request here. The Fleetwood Mac style backing track. You got it, my man. I'll play that at the end of the stream. You got it. Uh, I may play that now, in fact. It's a great track. We'll come back to that one. Um, but we'll come, we'll come back to that. Now, here it goes, right? Here we go. We've got some good ones. Uh, PJ says, I think it depends on where you want to take the music. I agree. I absolutely agree. Steve McDee's talking my language. Sliding up sounds unstable, uh, whereas sliding down sounds stable. Uh, our friend Jason is saying sliding upwards is leading to something. I absolutely agree. Where uh, David Yates says if you slide up, it feels like the note, uh, slide up, it feels uh, like it needs a final note as a destination. Mark Crandall's got a great comment too. Uh, feels like sliding down is ending and sliding up is a beginning. You absolutely have it. Now, if you think about the way that we communicate, uh, the way we talk, if um, we're asking a question, if we have what's called a questioning inflex, the, the sound of your voice goes up at the end of the question. So if I said, what do you guys think? Like, what do you think? Sliding up. If I say, this is what I think, down. Very, very affirmative. So down feels pretty like, yes, we are finished. Up feels kind of like we're going somewhere. Now we don't just have to slide up we can bend up as well, if you guys remember. So we can use that as a way of getting a little bit of questioning in place on the end of our note too. So let's jam, right? Let's play along with our modern prog backing track. Grab your guitars. We're gonna do some stuff with this, right? Because I love these jams. I feel like it's a good way to kind of ingrain this sort of stuff. We're gonna do some stuff where we compare sliding up in a phrase versus sliding down in a phrase. And we're also gonna do a bit where I do one and then you do the other and you can compare your results. So let's see what we've got. If you wanna grab your backing track guitars, we're in E minor, our backing track's in E minor. A good place to begin is the E minor pentatonic scale, which might be somewhere around here if you guys just want somewhere basic to play, uh, where maybe we have our 12th fret box and we can play 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12. And then we can have 15, 12 down here. And a few of the cool notes you can throw in, we can throw in the second or the ninth, which you might find here on 14 on your high E string, and then 11 here on your G string, if you want some additional places to play. But you can play with the pentatonic scale. If you are a little bit more knowledgeable, you can play the natural minor scale or the Aeolian mode if you prefer. We're in E, so play any way you like. But we're gonna start with some phrases. I'll play one, you're gonna play it back to me. And we're gonna do some stuff where we slide downwards out of our final note. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna play here. Your turn. So your focus here is sliding downwards. And I want you to pay attention, I want you to pay attention to what's going on narratively and emotively with the sound. How does it make you feel? What does it make you think when you do this? Okay, so I'm gonna go again, sliding down. So paying close attention to that feel there, that's what we want. This time, let's slide up. break, then it's going to be your turn. Ready? Here we go, your turn. You get the best bit, you get the loud part. Sliding up is the thing. 
We've got some good stuff coming in in the comments, right? You'll be reaching some conclusions here, right? Let's do it again. My turn. Your turn. You're gonna get the last word here, because I'm gonna finish it after this. The track goes on a little bit longer, but that's okay. You can have the last word. We'll pause that there. So we've got some really cool stuff coming in, in the comments, right? You guys have got some very good observations here, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the nuance on this stuff in a moment. You didn't think I was just gonna leave it at that, did you? Of course, of course not, of course not. We're gonna get into the weeds, because that's what we like to do. Uh, so here's some fun stuff, right? Here's some fun stuff. Uh, first of all, our friend Alan Carson, MD eye surgery. I could do with some of that, right? Because my glasses, pretty thick. Uh, says sliding up lacks resolution. 100% agree, that's absolutely true. Now, now, that's useful because we don't always want every phrase to resolve. If we resolve every phrase, resolve every single phrase, it feels like we're not going anywhere. It feels like we're not setting up the tension that we need to create an interesting melodic progression in our solos, if you want to call it that. Here's an interesting one. Larry Warren says, one has an almost minor feel, sliding up uh, almost had a major feeling. That's a really interesting way of putting it because we're associating uh, the major with this optimism, I guess, or with this kind of like, um, like, yeah, everything's great kind of thing. It's a very optimistic thing, whereas that minor thing feels like a fall. Um, again, it's all stupid, like, tones of voice, I guess, is an interesting one. But here's a very, very, very interesting one, right? Very interesting one. Uh, sliding down sounds great with delay. Uh, DMAC Pro says, sliding down usually begs me to follow with a high bend. I can relate to that, to be fair, because, you know, like... I want to follow everything with a high bend, but that's just me. Say it regards Slayer, though. He's hit a really, really good point here. Long slides down are fine. Long slides up sound obnoxious. They must be short to work, in my humble opinion. Not a humble opinion. Needn't be a humble opinion, because you are right. Now, what I will say with work is sometimes obnoxious is cool. If you want obnoxious, you can slide up, and it can sound really, really good fun. Um, it can almost sound comical, in a way. Now, comedy can be a fun thing to play with on the guitar. You know, Greg Koch does this all the time. Uh, who else do we have? Greg Koch does it all the time. Uh, Guthrie Govan does it all the time. Bumblefoot does it all the time. These kind of comedic phrases. Now that's not an emotion that's off limits for the guitar. We can play with comedy, we can play with humor. Um, personally, I don't like that all of the time, but sometimes it's fun. Now, the important takeaway here, important takeaway here from Sacred Gods, from Sacred Gods Slayer's excellent comment is, what do we do with the length of our slide? So we're just dealing with slides at the minute, but there's loads of other ways we can call it at the end of the note. It's not just slides in today's lesson, but slides are an important part of it. So, uh, oh, Steve Vai as well says sacred, says uh, feature now. Yeah, 100%, I agree, absolutely agree uh, with humor and guitar. So, but the important takeaway from Sacred God Slayer's comment is that not all slides are equal. We don't always slide the whole distance of the neck. We can slide off a little bit. So let's experiment with that. Let's go back to our jam. This time what we're gonna do is we're gonna experiment with one phrase that ends sliding up and then one phrase that ends sliding down. That's your challenge for this. You get one phrase that slides up, one phrase that slides down. But I am gonna throw this at you. I'm gonna do a short slide up and a big slide down. Check this out. turn, one phrase with a short slide up, and then one phrase with a big old slide down. We like that. I'm going to do the same again. One phrase with a short slide up, one phrase with a long slide down. Now that can be quite good fun. In our next little portion, we're going to experiment with it within a phrase. But we'll come back to that. So a long slide down, short slide up. Let's try that. So I'm going to go short slide up. You 
take a quick turn, nice short turn. And we're gonna kill that there. Now, how's that working for you? That's an interesting one, playing with the duration or the length of our slides. Now, if we're doing short slides up, here's an interesting one, Future Now says here, uh, with, the, uh, with the immediate short slide down, it wants to follow up with an arpeggio melody. Interesting, into that, into that. Uh, Cat Cat says, ups, me sound like Matthias Eklund with fast Indian slides, great guitar player, tremendous guitar player. And again, somebody else that's not afraid to use humor in his guitar playing. So that's killer, right? We're really into that. Um, not that Matthias is like a one-note guitar player by any stretch of the imagination. He's not just a humorist, he's a fabulous guitar player in all manner of idioms, as are all the guys we mentioned earlier. But still, it's interesting that these guys are creative enough to, to throw that stuff in there. So anyway, if we have a short slide up, we could just as easily do a short bend up, could we not? Well, let's experiment with that. Like, what's the difference between this versus this? That sounds kind of cool. A little less obnoxious. That's kind of fun. I'm into that. And I even slid it off downwards. That's kind of a fun way to put a little bit of a something else is coming on the end of a phrase. We can experiment with that. But here we're going to do another thing, right? So. We'll stick with slides just for the time being, because bends are fun, we're into that, but we'll, we'll do some slides. This time what we're going to do is we're going to experiment with the idea of doing it within phrases. So we've just done some stuff where the end note of each phrase has kind of like a slide up or a slide down. Let's do it within a phrase. So what I mean by this is we are going to study the idea of combining a slide up followed by a slide down, and we'll do it within a single musical idea. You can do these as many times as you like, but the theme is going to be slide up, then slide down. Not immediately, not like this. That's kind of fun, you can do that. But, you know, we'll maybe think about that little manoeuvre. Doesn't have to be the same note, it could be any note that you want. That's just the theme of our improvisation. So let's have a little play. So if I go like this, Quite good fun, apart from the wrong note at the beginning. Your turn. I'm gonna play with that a bit more. So I'm gonna take a turn. So I may go like this. Turn. So again, our theme is sliding up, contrasted with sliding down. It's pretty cool. I'm going to take a turn. turn after this, you get the good bit. Here it comes. I want to go with that, so I'm going to take a turn. We're not going to shred, we're going to stick on the melodic stuff, just for now. Just a little bit there. I think we're coming up with some cool ideas here, right? I'm into those. Really into those. We'll kill out there. So that's sliding, right? That's some sliding. That's how we dismount the note. 
is maybe a way of thinking about it. We can do it with bends, of course, but we'll come up with some cool ideas. Well, we might get this idea where we start playing with phrase that is themed around sliding up. So we'll make it a phrase like this. <laughs> Quite good fun, quite good fun, I think you'll agree. Or we can do the same thing with a phrase that's themed about sliding down. We're getting kind of into the weeds with this stuff. We might get... Again, sounds pretty cool. I'm kind of into all of those stuff. Now, we're gonna pivot just a little bit. We're gonna turn our attention to a different idea, which is something that was kind of kind of thrown into the mix way further up, which was vibrato. Now, here's an interesting one. We talked about vibrato a little bit, but this is a really good one from our friend Jason. There's wide vibrato at the ends of notes. Well, what do we do with vibrato at the ends of the note? We've talked about it in the middle of the note, but we've talked about the idea of vibrato and its onset period. Let's just do a little bit of that. So what I mean by onset period is the duration of the note that you play before you apply your vibrato. So this has a very different sound to this. Can I answer this question? Yes. Okay, coming back to that. Uh, we'll get back to that. Yes, there is. It's ready to go. It's ready to go. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Fear not, you will know as soon as you get it, right? As soon as it lands, you guys will know. You get an email about it and everything. Um, so we'll come back to that. But yes, and it's literally called Expressive Techniques. Um, part one, because I have part two in the uh, running already, which is why Technique Hotfixes has a part two coming and I have Picking Strategies part one coming and Practice Templates part one coming and all this stuff. Uh, just cool two word titles. Anyway, Spoilers, we're not giving that away. So vibrato, applying vibrato with a bit of time before the end of the note is kind of interesting in and of itself. So let's play with that. Let's play with the idea of what we do with our vibrato. So let's contrast. We're gonna go back to our backing track. We're still in E minor, so grab your guitars. We're gonna play along. Let's contrast vibrato that is on for a while goes on for a long time before we finish our note versus just a little tiny bit of vibrato, even just one or two pulses before we finish. What I mean by that is this. Versus this. Did you hear just that tiny little bit of pulse at the end? Just giving a hint of vibrato. That's kind of cool. Let's play with that. turn, contrasting our vibrato with what we do at the end of our note. Our contrast is the important bit, that's what we want, right? So I'm going to take a turn, my turn, here we go. Turn. Something to be said about letting that note develop and just hang there before we put a tiny bit of vibrato on. Sounds pretty cool. Alright, I'm gonna take a turn. This time I'll apply it just at the very end. Taking our time with that vibrato, it can sound very, very cool if you delay that on set. I'm into it. But what if we do something different with it? What if we do something where we apply the vibrato and then stop? Not a fan of that, but let's try it. You have a go. Sometimes finding the things that you're not a fan of more important than finding things you are a fan of. So I'm going to go again. 
or hit the theme and then we stop. Not a fan of that, not a fan of that one bit. Now, this is interesting because I already knew I wasn't a fan of that, but how do you guys feel about this sound? How do you feel about the sound when we play our vibrato and then we stop? And it just kind of dies. Don't like that. Do not like that one bit. Now, here's an interesting thing. That's something that I see loads of guitar players do. And I don't want to be that guy that says loads of like, like intermediate guitar players or something. I think those levels and this kind of like, oh, you're an intermediate guitar player, you're an advanced guitar player, whatever. David Yates is not the best. I agree it's not the best. But I see a lot of guitar players do this. And I'm not a fan. So for my money, once the vibrato goes on, when it's time to stop the vibrato, the note stops. That's my thought on the subject, right? And this can also mean having the courage, having the courage to finish a note. Now, a lot of times we do this thing where we do the vibrato and then we just let it stop because we don't know what's happening. But having the courage to finish a note sooner than you think you want to finish that note is really important. And also having the courage not to apply the vibrato at all. Sometimes it's cool just to let a note hang there and just not have the vibrato, especially if we play like some shreddy stuff. Right, so we play some real shreddy stuff. This is something singers will do. Singers will talk about the idea of doing these kind of crazy runs and whatever. Um, despite being a vocalist, I don't really do any of that stuff. That's not my bag. Um, but what I will talk about is to talk about the idea of doing all that stuff and then not putting the vibrato in the end. Do the stuff and then just let it fall. Let it come off. So sometimes it can be quite good fun to do the, uh, you know, the big shred boys. And just let it fall, let's stop. Some great thoughts on vibrato in the comments, by the way. Here's some really cool ones, right? Imagine Bruce Dickinson starting vibrato and then going plain on that note. It just doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Same can, true if you same can be true if you intend to take a note further, by the way. So if you intend to do something like this... You might not want to do this. Not so big on that. So for me, when the vibrato starts, the vibrato stays until the note finishes personal taste. You may feel the opposite to this, and if you do, that's 100% okay. 100% okay. You're allowed to disagree with me, right? This is not gospel. This is not rules. This is just my taste. And we've discovered something that I don't like, that some of you guys don't like, but it doesn't matter if you do like it. If you do like it, great. We've discovered something you do like. So let's play with the idea, one last little jam, of not doing anything on the end of our note and being courageous enough to finish a note without adorning it. Now, I say courageous because sometimes the guitaristic urge to go boo or boop or woo -woo 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 -woo, all that sort of stuff, right? We don't want that. Maybe we don't want that all the time because it just becomes, here's an interesting one, right? Rory, Liz Rory Lisbon uh, says, too many notes equals loses focus on melodic content. I can agree with that, but sometimes too much expression it loses its meaning. It loses its power when you apply it all the time. So having the courage to not do it is kind of important too. So let's play with that. Here's an approach where we play with not doing anything to the ends of our notes and just letting it be done. Here we go. Ten, you have a go. I had a good long go on that one. Now what's interesting is I made it a focus to try and not do stuff on the ends of notes, but I ended up doing it anyway 
But it's okay, because what I did was quite cool, or I thought so. So that's fun. So we have a little focus that's leading us somewhere interesting with this. All right. My turn. Get the good bit. Here we go. I just love this backing track. I can play this track all day too. All right, I'm gonna have a go. Now this time I would play with the idea of leaving notes unadorned mid-phrase. So I might go like this. Now what's interesting there is all of those notes that weren't adorned, that were just left hanging plain, they kind of set up, they set up the uh, whoa when we hit those big expressive bends and big vibrato notes at the end. So this sometimes this contrast is exactly what you guys need in your playing. Certainly what I need in my playing. I do this all the time and I pay conscious attention to it. So when I'm playing this sort of stuff, um, I'm trying to think in terms of setting up the payoff. So you set up the big super melodic thing. Now, sometimes you can set up the super melodic thing by contrasting it with loads and loads of shred. Um, that sounds a little weird, but I'd just be playing a heavy metal gig where, um, you know, I'm playing all this sort of stuff that's really, really big and do -do 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 where I'm... where that big shreddy, 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 shreddy thing was just a setup. It was a setup to take you to that big note. And for me, that's a useful use or a useful application for all the shred thing. We're not here to talk about shred though, but this contrast is kind of what we want. So we'll come back to that. In the meantime, I want to take this opportunity to tell you guys about a course that we have in GI+, and I also want to show you this. See this guy, boop, kicking around here. This is a rock slide. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with rock slides. I use rock slides, right? This one is a rock slide medium glass. And I found this in my drawers when I was clearing stuff out the other day. And I want to give it to one of you. I want to give it to one of you guys. I want you to have it because it's too big for me. I'm a pinky finger kind of guy. This is the slide that our man Ian Simo uses. It's a rock slide medium. It's good for third finger or even second finger. I'm going to show you the course and what I want you to do Dear friends, is I want you to record yourself playing some slide with whatever slide you have, right? Maybe something inspired by Ian's course, doesn't have to be. Send it to me on Instagram, at Nick Jennison. You can tag me, you can send it to me directly. I'm gonna choose one of you guys at random and I'm gonna send it to you. I'll post it to you, I'll pay for the postage. So it's yours, it's yours. One of you guys, you get this, but you gotta send me some stuff, right? Ideally, you'll tag me in it. And you also tag Guitar Interactive in it because we love it when you guys tag us in your videos. So if you want a, you want a free rock slide that's too big for me, never been used, never even been out of its bottle, you can have it, right? It's all yours. In the meantime, check this out. This is Ian Semo's slide guitar for standard tuning.
Hi, my name is Ian Simmel and I'd like to share with you my course on slide guitar for standard tuning. This is a 10 part series in which we're going to explore the essential slide hand techniques and pick and hand techniques. We're also going to take a look at rhythm playing with the slide. So we're going to look at how to integrate the slide with major and minor triads. enjoyed putting this series together. It comes complete with some backing tracks for all of the example phrases and exercises so you can practice along and it comes complete with tablature and notation for all the example phrases and exercises. So if you've been interested in getting into slide I highly encourage you to check out this course. It's 10 part series on slide guitar for standard tuning. If that doesn't make you want to play slide, I don't know what will. Every time I, I play this trailer, I'm like, I need to get my slide, I need to play. I'm a pinky finger slide guy, so I have my slide right here. But if you want a free slide, you want this one, right? Record yourself playing some slide, I'll send it to you. It is yours. This is not a contest, by the way. It's not a best slide player wins, otherwise you just go and give it to Ian. Yeah, hey, you take this. Uh, but he's a rock slide artist, so he gets them for free anyway. But um, if you want it, it's yours. Just tag me. Love to give it to you. Uh, anyway, we're going to turn our attention to some questions that we've had in the comments, and oh man, we've had some good ones, right? So we're going to get onto this. Uh, I want to address a few of these first. Just going to re-highlight some of these comments. So first of all, uh, Cowcat says, uh, "Hey, hello, people. Oh, ooh, hello. Oh no, right. Bear with me one second, guys. It looks like my main camera. This technology is rubbish. Main camera, which is my Sony." Uh, has overheated. It's prone to doing this. I'm just going to turn it off and on again, and it'll be fine. Bear with me just one moment. What is up with tech these days? It does this every once in a while. Uh, it will just like randomly overheat, and then it'll go, nope, that's enough. That's too much. Uh, but we've definitely got enough time to get the rest of the stream on the go. I think I'm going to switch my fan on just to blow some cool air into it, and then it should be fine. Come on, little Sony. You'll be okay. Anyway, so Cowcat says, Hello people, uh, future big hit guitar tuition material could be how to recover guitar skills after vacations or how to not suck much more than before. Uh, and then we've got an interesting one here from Sacred God Slayer, which says, I keep a diary on my practice routine. Uh, it's from July 15th uh, and I haven't been playing for more than 10 minutes a day except a couple of times and I used to play two hours a day very annoyed. Um, we've got another one here. <laughs> Cowcat, you are the master of no progress and self-doubt. That's hilarious. I love it. Uh, I have a mental book with one page that says, you sound exactly the same as when he started playing the guitar deal with it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. But here's, we, we go, it goes on. Uh, to clarify more, uh, is, it's the way we play that doesn't change, uh, or the way they play that didn't change. Uh, they improve their knowledge of what they did. Uh, if they need to, but the physical way they deal with the instrument is the same. This is referring to, uh, to, guitar players. Um, PJ says, does anyone think that we try to learn too much rather than honing in on what we're really good at? And then we get here, right? Sacred God Slayer says, I have muscular problems, man. I don't practice to get better, uh, but mostly to not regress and not lose ability. A few plays of not, a few days of not playing uh, kills all my stamina uh, and my resistance, I'm guessing, right? We're going to get to that. Um, so, we're going to talk about coming back from after a layoff. This is kind of one of the questions you guys have. Coming, from, coming back from after a layoff is important. Uh, I realized um, as I was in the warm-up room, in the, the, the warm-up room, geez, that's what you get at the power lift from me, when I was in the green room um, at my gig uh, yesterday, that I hadn't played guitar for more than 90 minutes in the previous 72 hours, um, previous three days. 
up until that point. And those 90 minutes that I had played, I'd been on stage with a different band. Um, that was a little bit of a trip. I'm like, wait a minute, I've got to go out and give the big shreds. Um, and wow. So what we started doing at those points, actually, as it happens, I've got plenty of time to warm up and I managed to get my chops together. It was fine. Um, and I'll post some solos um, later on because we've got some cool tones as well, which I'm going to show you. So anyway, um, they'll be on my Instagram. Um, but it got me thinking about um, the durability of one's technique um, and also kind of like dealing with coming back after a layoff. Now, this is similar to coming back to exercise after a layoff, but the lengths of time are shorter. And I know this because I've recently had uh, a layoff from training after my competition, uh, at a powerlifting competition, for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, did okay, it's pretty good fun. Um, and after that, I had a little bit of a layoff from training where I trained very, very gently for a week just to kind of, you know, ease myself back in. Now, the periods of time are shorter when it comes to guitar playing because we're not dealing with things like muscular adaptation. We're dealing with skill adaptation. We're selecting for fine motor control. And we'll get to that. So skill adaptation tends to decay faster than things like physiological muscular adaptations. Um, but it also tends to come back faster. Now, skills that we've learned, B.B. King talks about this. B.B. King said it's easier to get back to where you've already been than to break new ground. And I can absolutely agree with that. I think that's kind of important to bear, to bear in mind. So what I would say here is um, when you come back, the first important thing to do is to manage your expect expectations of where you're going to be. You're not going to be able to play at 100% of your absolute best performance. It's probably not going to happen. Maybe you will, but it's likely that you won't. But that's okay, because it's likely that you won't be able to play at 100% of your absolute greatest performance on any given day. If you think about the absolute best guitar playing day you've ever had, right? And then you think about the absolute worst guitar playing day you've ever had, where you just had sausages for fingers and they didn't do anything. Like, oh God, these don't work, um, right? Now, what, if you think about that and you think about those kind of bad days and you think about those good days, we have this weird expectation, this weird bias in our head where we want the good days to be every day. And we feel like if we're not on that like good, good, good day, um, you know, something's wrong. But in reality, by its definition, by the definition of words, definition of the term itself, the majority of guitar playing days will be an average guitar playing day. So what I would say is if you come back from a layoff and you're able to play at an average level, not brilliant, but you know, average for yourself, and that can mean different things for different people, and there's different ways to measure this, then you're probably good. Like, you're probably good. That's probably a good place to be. Don't expect to come out and play at your absolute best after a layoff. However, what is interesting is um, a layoff gives you time to dissipate some fatigue. And what I mean by that is if we use the analogy of, here's a great one, right? Sacred God Slayer says, I like that. Uh, they use fine motor control. I read someone said virtuosi are the athletes of fine movements. That's 100% what it is. I like the idea of musicians being the athletes of the small muscles. Um, that's kind of a fun way of putting it as well. Um, but here's an interesting one. So, because uh, it is kind of an athletic pursuit. It's just an athletic pursuit of fingers, I guess. We're trying to achieve uh, an aesthetic goal, but we need some athletic prowess to be able to do it. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you have to be a shredder or you have to be some kind of sport guitarist, but you need some kind of facility to be able to express the ideas that you want to express. Unless when, what you want to express is absolute chaos. You just want to bash on a guitar and feed back through a thousand delay pedals, which is an artistically perfectly fine thing to do, but doesn't require a whole lot of athletic prowess, unless you're jumping around while you're doing it, but that's a different kind of athletics. Anyway, um, so this fatigue thing, right? So if I think about my um, myself uh, when it comes to training to be physically strong, training to lift heavy objects, uh, arbitrarily shaped objects in arbitrary movement patterns, um, aka the barbell lifts. Um, what happens is when I train, I accrue fitness adaptations in that, you know, I grow more muscle tissue, I develop neurological adaptations that allow me to produce more force, but I also accrue um, 
fatigue. And what I mean by fatigue is, you know, basically my body gets tired. It's a little bit beat up. Uh, now, you don't accrue the same amount of fatigue physically as a musician. You can if your practice sessions are very long and your tolerance is not very well developed, but you can absolutely accrue musical fatigue. So you can accrue fatigue in the sense of like, just don't know what to play. Don't know what to play. Don't like it. Not interested. Sometimes time off can be really good. Even if the time off is not uh, if it's not deliberate, if it's just something that just happens, life gets in the way, or you go on a trip, or you're doing something cool. You know what it is? We've already got some good comments to that end. Steve McDee's already said, I play better after a week off. Musically better, not technically better. Now, this is cool, because it gives you an opportunity to dissipate fatigue and revisit the instrument with fresh ears, which is cool. So you can start looking for some interesting creative possibilities. So if you set your practice goals in those terms after a layoff, and he set up from the perspective not of I'm going to get back to my technical apex, but you set it from the perspective of I'm going to use this opportunity to explore some ideas um, that I maybe wouldn't have done before. You can think about it as a guitar playing pivot, a pivot in your practice. And this can be quite important any time that you find musical fatigue creeping up, if you've been practicing a lot, or even physical fatigue, because um, it can't happen. Roy Lisbon's, or Rory Lisbon's got a good one. I keep saying Roy. I mean to say Rory, but I'm like abbreviating very, very slowly. I speak quite fast, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, or concentrate on fingerstyle instead of picking. This is what we're talking about, about a pivot, where you take what you've been playing and you just pivot to working on something else. And that can be for one session, it can be for a week, it can be for a month. Totally up to you, right? You pivot, and if the pivot's ye yielding results, then run with it. And if it's not, just use it as a washout period to get rid of some musical fatigue, some physical fatigue. Now, in terms of getting back to your technical best, I have some go-to exercises that will I'll get to like literally every time that every time that I um I want to get back to my technical best, right? So if I'm playing away uh, and I I'm traveling, I don't really get to touch a guitar for a couple days. I'll come back to a handful of easy exercises. I say easy, they're quite challenging. But uh, these are ones that my friend Nick Harrison shared with me, for example. And I, I like these ones a lot. I'll do this one, for example, where I might go. Now this is interesting because these are exercises that I've ingrained very well. And you may have your own exercises, there may be songs, there may be licks. What I do with these is I don't go in with the intention of playing these at my absolute best. I don't go in with the intention of going, okay, I'm gonna rattle this at 180 BPM, it's gonna be sick. We don't do any of that. What I do is I come in and I go, I'm gonna play this exercise, I'm gonna play it at a speed that's challenging, but not very challenging. Where I have to think about it, but not at a speed where it starts to come apart or it's ever in any danger of coming apart. And what I do in the process of doing this is I allow myself an opportunity to relearn the exercise. I momentarily relearn the movement pattern. And this in turn, this process of momentary relearning reinforces all of the other stuff that I've done. So maybe I'll do something like this. Maybe I'll have, I don't know, maybe I'll have a, a lick where I play. Which is something that I do quite a lot. Uh, that's kind of a pattern that I'll play all the time. If I have some time away from it, and I just allow myself to play that stuff at a pace that's comfy but isn't too crazy, it reinforces not just that, but all of the patterns that are associated with that, because that momentary skill relearning just kind of like refreshes that movement pattern uh, and all of the movement patterns that are around it. So. Yeah, managing your expectations, finding go-to exercises, really, really important after a layoff. Uh, and also using it as an opportunity to take the fatigue that you dissipated, uh, and from there, um, take the fatigue you dissipated, uh, and and use it to kind of like explore some cool new creative ideas. We've got people who've looked up my powerlifting total. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, it says uh, 252 deadlift. Not bad. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, deadlift's my jam. I was a bit disappointed in my bench, to be honest. I was really hoping for a 145 bench. Um, but my second attempt, like my first attempt, one of my hips came up. And I'm like, right, let's take it easy. Let's go 135. So the plan was to go 135, get three whites and then maybe push 140, maybe 142. So my PR in the gym is 142, but that was a while ago. Um, but my 135, like, 
both hips came up and then both hips came up again. Just happens. So something I need to figure out. I haven't had a chance to train on a competition spec bench. So it's one of those things. Squats, pff, help. <laughs> I'll get to that. That's something I'll fix in my own time. So anyway, listen, powerlifting aside, I promised my friend uh, Blue Sumlin that we'd play along with the Fleetwood Mac style back and track uh, at the end of our stream. I'm going to find it. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure where I've put it. It's in my playlist of back and tracks, but let me just quickly go and grab it. If you guys want some of this stuff, uh, you can get them uh, for free on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. Um, so let's just find the thing. So if I go into my Dropbox, I'll probably have to drag this into my big um, back and tracks project, but it's okay, I'll just do that right now. Uh, so where are we at? We're in ballads. Um, is it in ballads and a chill, I think, uh, which is my little categories of back and tracks. Um, now where is it? Dreamy 76, let's drop that in and we're gonna jam over this for the end. So this is our Fleetwood Mac style back and track. Um, I love, love, love this track. Let me make sure it's coming out of the right output, otherwise you guys won't hear it. Um, and let's just quickly trim that to length. And I'm gonna play over this one at the end. In the meantime, thank you so much for having me. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive. I am gonna go and sleep for a week because I'm very, very tired. Uh, like I said at the top of the stream, literally jumped out of the van. Been home for about 45 minutes, well an hour and 45 minutes now. I need to eat, I need to shower, I need to sleep, uh, and then I'll be fine tomorrow. But I'll see you guys next week, same time, more expressive stuff uh, and some cool stuff. Don't forget, if you want a free slide, I want to give this to you, right? This is for you, right? I want to give this to you. You can tag me in your slide playing on Instagram. You can just send it to me if you prefer, but I'd like it if you tag me. I'm gonna pick one at random. It's not a best slide wins, it's just a random, random pick. You get a medium rock slide that I found in my uh, draw, and you get it, I'm gonna send it to you. I'll pay for the postage, you don't have to do a thing. Uh, in the meantime, this is our Fleetwood Mac style backing track. I will play. Um, yeah, I'll play along with this, and I'll see you guys next week. This is in A minor, by the way, if you wanna jam along with me. Here we go. That's two backing tracks at once. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Here's this one. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Let me know if you can. If anything is wrong with the backing track, let me know. I forgot how much I love this track. Let's do it. Here we go. Seems like a good note to finish on. I'm going to say goodbye. My name is Nick Jennison, Guitar Interactive. See you guys next week. In the meantime, this is GI Plus. My name is Nick Jennison, and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Or maybe Country's more your bag? Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? 
Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmore, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Slash, Tosin Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today.